Why my feet can't stop, my heart can't help but sing It's a wonderful feeling To feel your love for me To feel the joy you bring Your love is the answer So I sing to you The reason is you, Jesus And I'm thankful that you love me oh, 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 oh. I'm thankful that you love me oh, 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 oh. I know the reason why my hands are up My feet dance down below It's a wonderful feeling that I belong You're the My name is Haley, and I love hunting for treasure and all things ancient. And I've discovered a very ancient flower! So, I've got a flower pot, some dirt, and some seeds. Let's get digging. 
These seats are for a flower called King Solomon Seal. So, they should remind us to have wisdom. Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. King Solomon is thought to be one of the wisest men who ever lived. Some say this very plant was growing in King Solomon's royal palace. One, two, three! Ta-da! While Solomon was king, he built a palace and a temple for God, and he ruled wisely for 40 years. One, two, and three! Ta-da! <laughs> Next, we smooth it over. There you go, little guys. Go to sleep. Good night. There! Now we wait for it to grow. Oh, nothing's growing. What am I missing? Oh, Haley, how can I forget? Every seed needs water to grow. <laughs> King Solomon would have remembered that. Yay! Sometimes I wish I could be wise like King Solomon. Do you ever wonder how he got to be so wise? Well, we'll find out in today's story. I suspect I'll be admiring my flowers when you get back. See ya. Oh, I think I saw something. Nope. Soon as you get back. Hurry back. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of 1 Kings, chapter 3, verses 4 through 28. Imagine this. You're in a deep sleep, dreaming, when all of a sudden, the creator of the universe shows up and says, Ask me for anything. Anything. You could ask for anything in the world and have it. What would you say? Perhaps you'd request an unlimited Amazon account where you could get whatever you want for free. Or perhaps you'd request a flying race car that could be dropped off at the moon or on the beach. Or you could ask to be the most popular kid in school forever. <laughs> this might sound like a fairy tale, but it's true. It actually happened to a young man named Solomon. When King David died, his son Solomon became king. What are your royal orders, most royal highness? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I've never been king before. Though Solomon was young and inexperienced, his father, King David, taught him to listen to God's words. So, Solomon showed his love for God by obeying his laws. I want to thank the Lord for everything he has done for my family. Solomon traveled to the city of Gibeon, where he offered a thousand burnt sacrifices to honor God. There is no one like you, God. That night, Solomon sank into a deep sleep, and the Lord appeared before him in a dream. Ask for anything you want me to give you. A thousand ideas must have exploded into Solomon's head. Gold, power, life forever. But instead, he said, Lord, you have made me a great king, but 
I'm only a little child. I, I, I don't know how to carry out my duties. I'm here among the people that you have chosen. They are a great nation, so give me a heart that understands. Then I can rule over your people. I can tell the difference between what is right and what is wrong. It was a simple request, but one that would change Solomon's life forever. You have not asked to live for a long time. You have not asked to be wealthy. You have not even asked to have your enemies killed. Instead, you have asked for wisdom. I will give you a wise and understanding heart. As long as you live, no other king will be as great as you are. As the dream faded, Solomon woke with a start. Was that real? That was real! Amazed, Solomon returned to Jerusalem where he once more gave sacrifices to honor God and held a great feast for all his officials. What are we celebrating, your most royal highness? God has promised to give me wisdom to lead the kingdom. How is that working out for you? Well, it was in a dream. Ah, I see. Perhaps Solomon wondered at first whether he really had received wisdom from God, but this was soon put to the test. Your most royal highness, you must help the people solve their problems. I'll do my best, with God's help. First order of business, we have these two ladies here. State your business, please. My friend and I, okay, so she's not my friend anymore. Speak for yourself. I'm trying to. We live in the same home and we both had baby boys, but her baby died and so she took my boy in the night and now she says my baby is hers. See, that's not her baby. No way, this baby is my son. Is not, is too. Ladies. Solomon turned to the first woman. You say my son is the living baby, but your friend says the baby is her son. That's a lie. Is not. Is too. God gave Solomon a wise idea. Bring me a sword. An official quickly brought the king's shining sword. Your royal sword, your royal highness. Solomon studied the two women carefully. Excellent. Now, cut the baby in two parts. Give one half to the first woman and one half to the second. Solomon had no intention of harming the baby, but he knew this was the way to find the truth. No! No, 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 no! Give her the baby! Don't kill him! Oh, whatever. Neither of us will get the baby. Solomon could instantly see which woman truly cared about the baby. Give the boy to the first woman here. She is his mother. Thank you. Oh, thank you! No fair! That was totally a trick. The baby was given to his true mother. All the Israelites heard about Solomon's decision and trusted that he would judge them fairly too. God made Solomon so wise that his understanding couldn't even be measured, like the sands on the seashore. So, plants need water to grow. You know what else they need? <laughs> Time. You can't just plant a seed and expect it to grow immediately. In fact, this plant's seeds takes at least two years before they sprout. That's a lot of waiting. <laughs> waiting for wisdom can feel like that. When Solomon asked God for wisdom, chances are he didn't wake up the next morning as one of the wisest men on earth. No, it took time for his wisdom to grow. The good news is that we can ask God for wisdom. Jesus' brother James once wrote, if any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. Maybe wisdom will just pop into your head right when you need it. Or maybe your wisdom will grow gradually like a flower as you learn from the people you meet, the mistakes you make, and the things you experience. No matter what though, you can trust God to give you wisdom. That's the one thing to remember today. Trust God to give you wisdom. When you have a tough decision to make or some problem that you're dealing with, talk to God about it. Ask him for the wisdom to know what to do. Then look and listen. If you're having trouble understanding what God is trying to show you, ask someone you trust to help. Wisdom may not come as soon as you think or in the way you think it will, but keep digging. God wants to share his wisdom with you. So looks like these little flowers aren't gonna grow while I watch. 
It's gonna take some more time. Check back with me in two years and I will see you then. Thank you.